There was a sage. He was so wise, people went to him and crowds gathered. Then the king went to him and the king saw such a wise man should be in his court. So he told the sage, you must come and become my chief minister because a wise man like you shouldn't go away sitting under a tree. You must be useful for the people. The sage said, see that's fine, but I have a condition. You must give me a room in your palace where I will spend every day one hour. You should never peep into that room, you should never ask me what it's about, you should never break into it, nothing. This room should be left unexplored by yourself, your servants, your secret agents and everybody. King Dad, that's not a problem. What's the problem with me? You want your room, why do I want to look into your room? Take it. Then whenever any important meeting is to come, this man who's sage, now who's become a minister, so he's wearing appropriate clothes for the palace, but he goes in to this room and locks himself for one hour and comes out. A few months and years passed, but then after that king's curiosity, you know, it even got us to Mars. <laughs> he wants to know what the hell is he doing inside. So rumors started all around, oh, he's doing something, he's got somebody inside, maybe he's an enemy agent, he suddenly landed here, what is he doing there, what is he doing there? Everybody, the whole palace started buzzing around with what is he doing in this room. Everybody wants to see what's in the room, but it's always locked, he goes in, spends time there and comes out. Especially when something important is to be done, he goes in. All kinds of rumors happened. So, one day king couldn't hold it. King asked this, this man, I want to see what's in that room. He said, well, there's a promise you've given me. If you break the promise, I will leave. So he contained it. He doesn't want to lose the man. He's too wise. And then his other courtiers started talking, how can you allow this? We don't know what's happening inside, it could be dangerous, it could be this, it could be that. One day when he was not there, they broke open the door and went inside. They looked around, the room is empty, no furniture, no nothing, just empty room. They looked, nothing, then what does he do here? Then in one corner they saw very, you know, worn out clothing hanging there and a begging bowl. They went. They couldn't make out what this is. Then he came in. He said, well, you wanted to see, you have seen. The king asked, what do you do here? He said, Whenever I want to make any important decision, I come here, wear my worn out clothes and sit with a begging bowl, bowl clearly, you know, that I don't want to be caught up with the… with all the things of the palace. I want my wisdom not to be lost in these clothes and in this uh, jewelry and in this stuff. So I come here, wear those clothes, sit with my begging bowl, make the decisions and then come out. Now you've broken the promise and he left. So, this is what meditation is for you. Every day when you sit, you strip yourself down. You don't have to do anything about it. If you sit there simply, see, anything that's made up needs constant support from you, isn't it? See, suppose you tell a lie. 
it needs constant support to keep it up, isn't it? But if something is true, you can even forget it, but it's still there, isn't it? You understand what I'm saying? If something is true, even if you forget it, it's still there, no problem. But if it's a lie, you have to keep it up. Your personality is a lie. Your being, your existence is the, is the truth. You don't have to keep this up. This will be anywhere there. What you make up for the sake of the society to function in the society, you need a certain kind of makeup. You must be able to keep it down. If you are going to bed fully made up, then something wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs>